Hey, what's going on? It's Azura here. Major changes are going to be coming to Battlefield 5's 5.2 update in early December. I'm going to be discussing briefly on what is going on with the armor portion of the update, but the rest of the update also includes a ton of stuff like the arrival of private games that is now called Community Game, the Fleek of House adjustments, the arrival of the Wake Island map, passive player ID UI changes, Massive weapon rebalancing that pretty much affects everything but the bolt action rifles. There will also be some UI changes in terms of the spotting system, but those are well covered in dozens of videos already out, so I am not going to be focusing on those. So the changes with armor gameplay can be huge, but it is still not certain from just the information we received so far. So the reason they want to change this is because a lot of vehicle players feel that it is difficult to push into an objective especially if they are using heavy, bulky tanks with very limited mobility. A lot of players feel that if they push into the objective with their tank, they are just going to get obliterated in the objective area. This ends up encouraging a playstyle that involves camping from spawn, or next to a resupply point or whatnot. This is very evident on maps like Aris or Aerodrome Breakthrough when the attacking tanks are often found just sitting around in spawn or in a camping spot far away from the action. This is also true because of the way they choose to balance the asymmetric tank spawn system, where sometimes once you lose a tank in that sector, you don't get another spawn, so people play really passively and don't try to play the objective. This creates many problems where the team with the tank feels like the tanker are just farming kills and not helping with the team, and the defenders feel like the tanks are very annoying because they don't get the chance to kill them, as they're just sitting really far away. This ends up being a very frustrating situation for both sides. I have previously covered ways to play tanks more aggressively, but in the hands of a less experienced player, they may have a hard time being aggressive with these tanks. Unlike the much more agile modern tanks in earlier titles, once you commit to a push, it is much more difficult to get away. So if you have been watching my previous videos, I have discussed extensively about angles, because that is one of the biggest aspects to successful tanking experience and to elevate your chance of winning tank battles as well as engaging enemy infantry. Angles have only been introduced in the recent titles and can sometimes create some inconsistency with the gameplay experience. That is especially true with the Ricochet system, even having the ability to defect a tank shell is a very interesting thing to be added to the game. To some, they feel as if it is like adding a chance for jamming to happen to guns. It is realistic to a certain degree, but at the same time, may not be particularly fun. I personally do not mind the Ricochet system if it is something my opponent also has to deal with, especially if they are taking risky shots. But for a more casual player base, this may be frustrating to see a tank shell deal a grand total of 1 damage. So in the blog post Dice put out today, I want to quote this line real quickly. They said, A big portion of the motivation for this change is consistency for players. It's possible today for a tank to get instantly destroyed or to be essentially invulnerable, and difficult to know the difference for either tanks or infantry. So that is their take on the part of the reasoning to change it. So now we covered the reasoning behind the proposed changes to tanks. Now let's talk about what are being changed. So before, we have these angle multipliers that dictate how much impact damage a shell can do at a certain degree of impact to a certain part of the tank. That's different from the blast damage which is not angle dependent. And to give you a few examples, the impact damage multiplier on the rear of a tiger tank can reach up to 2.2 times damage as long as the angle of impact is between 75 and 90 degrees. Then there will be a linear drop off to damage down to 0.2 times at 10 degrees. Basically, if you're just barely scraping the rear of the tank. The front would have something like 1.2 times damage between 75 and 90 degrees of impact down to 0.2 times if it's less than 45 degrees. This means that there's quite a steep drop off if your angle is not perfect on the front, much more so than the rear. This idea is not changed in the new proposal, but rather change some of these numbers around to make things more consistent. So before talking about what are actually being changed, I do want to say that these are just from the blog post and sometimes wording can be a little ambiguous, but I will try to tease out what they are trying to do here. So the example they gave was to separate the wide ranges of damage a tank can receive from a various numbers of angles to a more consistent damage. So there will be three types of hits, the big hits, yes they call it that, the normal hits, and the ricochet hits. 
The big hits are going to be at almost perfect angle for the front and side and a little bit more forgiving for the rear. So earlier I said the old system big hits on the front is achievable at 75 degrees but now it may approach 90 degrees. I'm not sure if they mean exactly 90 degrees or they mean something like 85 degrees. We will have to see after they release the update. So the angle that you can deal maximum damage is now much narrower meaning it will be harder to deal this kind of damage as long as the enemy tank is just angled a little bit. Then the next one would be normal hits. That means anything outside the perfect angle will do flat damage. And note that they said flat damage, meaning the perfect 40 rule that I suggested in my previous videos may see some changes. There may not be a gradual curve anymore with an infinite number of damage values depending on the angle you are at, but rather a flat amount of damage as long as you are between the ricochet hit and the normal hit. That certainly simplifies things a little bit. So before for the Tiger, you get a pretty terrible damage even if you hit at 45 degrees. 0 0.2 times impact damage should be exact. But now it appears that perhaps you still do a decent amount of damage as long as you are above 45 degrees even just half a degree above that? That is a tad bit concerning. And for two equally skilled tanker using an equivalent tank, it may be more important to have a faster rate of fire rather than who gets the best angle. But I'll also have to reserve my judgment of that until we get the update. And then for the ricochet hits, now it is a bit more clear on what the angle is. Before it was a little hard to tease out exactly when it will ricochet and when it will not. Now from the wording, it appears that anything under 30 degrees will automatically become a ricochet hit, dealing minimal damage. Perhaps it is a flat one or one with a drop off if you get even lower angle. They did not elaborate on this part so we'll have to see. All of these angles will be tighter for heavy tanks but a bit more loose on lighter armored vehicles like the Staghound. All of these can potentially mean that it will be more difficult to deal perfect damage but easier to deal decent damage. But again. They can always play with the multiplier numbers to distinguish between how much better a perfect hit is and how good a decent normal hit is. Because of the potential that you can deal a flat amount of decent normal hit damage on a tiger's front at 45 degrees, whereas in the current build, you deal minimal damage, this may potentially make tents even more vulnerable. But again, this is all just a number game, so I will again have to reserve my judgment of this. So just a quick summary of this would be that DICE wants to make tanking experience better by making things more consistent and supposedly make them tankier. But I do have some concerns for certain angles being potentially more damaging to the tanks than the current build. But rest assured once the update gets released, there will be a more in-depth guide on the angles. And a few more vehicle related things would be the changes to AT mines. They will be more effective at disabling parts but do less damage. But now, one infantry can place up to 6 of them at the same time. There will also be some adjustments to dynamite damage to tanks. And the anti-tanks equivalents of the Fliegefaust, the lunch mines, will see a bit of a delay before coming out. Apparently they can't get the blast damage correctly, so tankers rejoice for another few weeks before the boom brooms come sweeping. Check out this clip here of what it may potentially look like. Here you can see you may be able to deal as much as 75 damage per hit to the rear of the tank and only taking 20 damage. That's a pretty good trade off for their infantry. But we'll see how that plays out. The current problem they have now is a problem with detonation and blast damage as you can see that the second time around he was not able to detonate it. And that's it for the video, let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord channel, links are down below. I would also appreciate it immensely if you decide to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notification. Otherwise have a tanktastic day and I will see you again soon.